My name's uh, Jason Romero, and I'm uh, from Northern California, which is where I started um, my banjo company. Well, I started playing banjo when I was around 20, I think. I was living in Chico, California at the time, and I went into a, went into a pub one night, and there was a guy playing banjo in an Irish band. He was playing five-string, finger-picking, but Irish music. I was just, what does that sound like? I think most people, when they first hear a banjo live, you know, for some people it was hearing, you know, Foggy Mountain Breakdown album, hearing Earl Scruggs, and, and I had heard that, but I didn't, it, didn't really, it didn't really take. And then when I saw this live, I kind of freaked out a little bit and uh, got a banjo and just inhaled the stuff. I was playing all the time. My name is Ferris Romero and I was born here in Horse Five, born and raised. I'm the fifth generation of my family to be born here. Jason doesn't stop thinking about banjos ever. He's always thinking about new banjo things, so he's constantly coming up with new ideas and I think that it, in the long run that's going to be the thing that identifies him in the builder community, in the luthier, in the global community larger because he's always thinking about new ideas, new tone rings, new design ideas, new rim ideas. This is our, um, this is our dowel stick. This is um, one of the first designs I came up with. Um, traditionally what um, was in open back banjos was it was a wooden dowel stick and I tried to marry that wooden dowel stick that look that traditional look with another attachment system basically this is attaching the neck to the rim and you got to be able to do that somehow so the, there's a Gibson came up with a way to um, use two lag bolts that went into the heel of the banjo but it didn't really look great because it's basically two pieces of steel that we come across and so I, I tried to take uh, the functionality of that which is using two lag bolts in the heel here but the look of, of what a traditional dowel stick would be. Custom screws that screw into the wood, I don't know, about an inch and a half, and the inside of that's tapped with machine threads. Each end has it. The neck's gonna have these lag bolts in the heel. So they're gonna screw onto that. So that's basically how I connect my neck to the rims. I went to school for fine woodworking and cabinet making at College of the Redwoods in Arcata when I was living there. After I came out of there, there was a, a banjo builder in Arcata um, called Wildwood Banjo Company. He'd been around since the 70s, and I took in a banjo that I had made, and, and he hired me, uh, thank goodness. I was working for him and then running home and trying to make banjos on my own. Um, you know, make a banjo, sell it, buy another tool. And so I slowly started doing this after work. And then I think it was about three years after I was working from him, I, when I had six months worth of orders is when I quit. When we first met, I was doing everything by myself. I was doing all the work. I had a buddy who was doing my website for me, but I was doing everything. And then I showed her how to do inlay work. And it didn't take her long. My mom was amazing growing up. We weren't allowed to sit and watch TV unless we were doing something. We had to be sewing or embroidering or making friendship bracelets or making jewelry or something. We always had, she was always cultivating that really creative, original potential side in all of us kids. And so I think for me, this just felt like a perfectly natural thing to do, to sit at a table cutting pearl and filing for eight hours. No problem, this is normal. She used to snap uh, the blades quite a bit um, when she was cutting pearl. Like she went through a lot of blades. Cause they're, I mean, they're really tiny. I'll give her that, they're, they're pretty easy to snap. I, I'd be working and I could just hear the blade snap and be like 50 cents, 50 cents. 
I would tease her, but she got really good really fast, basically. And now her inlay work is, I think, as good as it gets. I'm a graphic designer by trade as well, and so that seemed to come into the design of a lot of the inlay. And so those two things came together, and I think probably within a year after us meeting, I was doing almost all the inlay in the banjo company. We cut all our inlay here by hand at Romero Banjos. It's really important to us to work with customers on creating designs that are specially for them, designed for them, unique to them. Um, as everything in our banjos is unique, we like the inlay to fit right within that spectrum. Tahitian black mother of pearl, sea snail, very, very precious stuff. This sea snail, it engraves really beautifully. Gold mother of pearl, this is one of my favorites, especially when you can get the nice deep gold like you can on this stuff. And we use a lot of metals as well for inlays. Brass is one of our particular favorites these days, not just for inlays, but also for onlays, going over top of the peg head, not necessarily set into the wood. We also use sterling silver whenever we can for certain particular banjos. And we love the look of copper as well, especially when it's been aged and patinaed. We tend to give a lot of the hardware and any metal that we use in onlays and inlays uh, pre-patina before we send it out of the shop. So not many things go out of our shop really, really shiny. We like to give things an age, almost like the kind of a gun bluing that you would think of that gunsmiths use. Jason is such a incredibly perfectionist, fine craftsman. He's amazing. And to have him put that, give me that responsibility and that share in the banjo company, is really neat like we I feel like we're a true partnership in that way we're constantly bouncing ideas off of each other and working together and strengthening the company that way she surpassed what I could do and in the shop she's just been so much help because I'll be doing all the woodworking the stuff that I'm trained to do and we, we meet kind of halfway through a, a batch where I get the necks ready for them and I hand them to her and she's already cut out all the shell and designed everything um, and so she can just put it right in the necks and then I can grab them and move from there. So we can, that's how we're able to do, um, you know, four to five custom one-off banjos high-end in a month because we're working as a team. For both of us who really crave the wilderness, we came up here to Horsefly and we both thought, oh my God, we might move back to Horsefly. This is crazy, really? We came up and played a square dance here with our old fiddler, uh, Aaron Marshall. And then it dawned on us, we're like, can we move back to Horsefly? Can you move back to Horsefly, honey? Once the idea came to us that we were actually going to move here, it seemed like the most natural thing. Like, why would we move anywhere else? And I'm so glad we didn't. Hang me up, hang me, I'll be dead and gone. Hang me up, hang me, I'll be dead and gone. Not the hanging. We wanted acreage, which was what was available up here and affordable. It was a small community that, that had a real community feel to it, which is what we wanted, but, but small and fairly isolated. My dad still lives uh, about 20 minutes that way, a couple valleys over in the house that I grew up in. Up on the Rocky Mountains, where I make my stand. Up on the Rocky Mountains, where I make my stand. So we had to think about all these things like, okay, how much more will cost the business to move to Horsefly? And we, re we realized that it's, uh, it wasn't going to cost any more. So uh, crow flew over. When we put the offer in on this place, it was definitely a challenge. We're, we're not very conventional people. We, we're kind of outside the box as far as banks are concerned. We haggled back and forth with the owners, and finally, they accepted our offer, but they said, we'll take your offer plus one Romero banjo. And we thought, done. Whatever, as many Romero banjos as you'd like. Mama and Papa, little sister make three. Mama and Papa, little sister make three. March me down to the gallows, lesson seat to me. I've been all around this world. Hang me, oh, hang me, I'll be dead and gone. Hang me, oh, hang me, I'll be dead and gone. It's not the hanging that I might as laid in just so long. I've been all around this world. 
I'll be working all day um, in the banjo shop and just come out here and take a nap in the hammock or, or go fishing just to get out of the shop and it's just the inspiration that it gives us for our business is just, it's pretty amazing. Come here. It's very mellow. This is Billy. I love old time music so much. It's meditative, it's fantastic, it's a community based music. Even if you don't know the exact same songs, the feel of that music is what brings these people together. I knew right away that I had found a compatriot in old time music. We, we lucked out in a lot of ways, in like every way, that we both love the same you know, early country, early old time music. Um, and uh, yeah. We're always having to balance playing music and building banjos, which is a great place to be, you know. Banjos saved the day. They let us buy this house. Banjos are the reason Jason and I met. Um, and banjos are what continue to give us happiness and joy and the ability to live here in this community. So they play a rather unique role in our life, I think. <laughs> Add a tune a little bit on that last note. Yeah, he's banded it good. Hey, leave it. Really? Come on. Come down and bury that lady. I know. No more. Thanks.